Hello, welcome to Anson Griffin's occasion series in MATLAB tutorials. Today we'll be looking at receiver operating curves. Uh, just to say this clearly at the beginning, this code is not from myself, it's from here. So I'll just give this man or woman the full credit for that. Okay, I've just taken it, done some comments, and that's all. So we have seven images. So, bottle one we think is contaminated because it's got this bright yellow precipitate which is looks milky in grayscale. Number two is contaminated, we think. Number three is not contaminated. Number four is not contaminated. Five is contaminated. Six is not. And seven is. Now, based on uh, the small sample, we want to be able to say, could we automate a procedure? for a production line to decide whether a bottle is contaminated or not contaminated. And what we're really looking at is the, con the contamination is based on the size of the cloud here. So that's what we're trying to think. So we would say here that, you know, this one that we would, that's quite heavily contaminated. So when we segment that, that and we're going to segment it out into black and white, that this will have a large white count. To say one other thing in advance, you would have to read in the seven bottles if you're doing this really from scratch and segment out uh, the seven using ROI poly. I just, for YouTube, I just don't have the time and it would take too long. So you, if you look up this yourself, the, the source code that I skipped is there. And what I did was to get over this problem, I say I did this already, I ri poly the seven of them and I saved it and then I just load the RI mat and I subtracted by the way the average intensity from each of them as per uh, the suggested solution here. So the selection code is determine the average intensity for each one of them, apply an average intensity, my average plus delta, count the number of pixels in the largest segment of blob and number four. If the bottle is greater than the largest, then n largest, then it's contaminated if it isn't greater than it's not contaminated. So we read in these files. Okay. Uh, here I displayed the seven files or seven images. Uh, as I mentioned before, you would have to ROI poly out the seven of them, and I don't have that done. Well, I, mean, I don't have it done here, but I have it done in ROI mat. So. We have here a solution um, that he suggests. So you group together the three that are uncontaminated, that's three, four, and six, and you group together the four that you think are contaminated, one, two, five, and seven. And you want to make, uh, from the one, two, five, and seven, you want to find the biggest blob. And from the biggest blob, that's going to give you some idea of the threshold. Some stuff we did in class, sensitivity is the true positive rate. So it's the probability to test is positive given that the patient has the disease, or the test is positive in this case, given that the bottle is contaminated. Specificity to test is negative given that the patient doesn't have the disease or the bottle is not contaminated. Uh, sensitivity and specificity depend on how well they're separated and what threshold we choose. Now, as we see later on, uh, the sensitivity and specificity is okay, but if we have eliminated the the variable uh, light intensity in the original seven images, the the um, they would be very well separated. The two classes, the contaminated and the non-contaminated, would be very well separated out. But not to worry. And one other thing, the false positive rate is one minus the specificity, and the false negative rate is one minus the sensitivity. For the uh, receiver operator curve, we plot sensitivity against one minus specificity, true positive rate against a false positive rate. So, I'm not. We, if you're new to this, you can read the ROC curve. But really, this is another lecture in itself. So I'm just going to leave there, and you can read it yourselves. Uh, the data is there, and. We're going to run through it, and we've left a little bit of code out already. You'll have to look up the original website for that. And we've subjected here the the contaminated bottles, and you've got the um, 
the receive wrap curve from that. Just go down a little bit here. There's the receiver operator curve. And we think the knee at the rate of the grace rate of change is somewhere around there. And if you drop that down there, that's about 0.1 or 0.11. Now, uh, in his notes, just go back up a bit here. He suggests um, um, 27. And when I did it, was I got it, I said the knee was at 0.11. That was just by line of sight, by 255, and I got 28. But 27, 28, we won't argue about it too much. It's the same thing. So we got the uh, the delta from the receiver operator curve, and then we got the blo the various blob sizes in images 1 to 7. There's blob 1, blob 2. Blob 3, there's no actual blob in the actual bottle, which would be around here. Likewise for Blob 4, there's no actual blob size for the bottle. This is just a variable lighting additions. Uh, 5 is contaminated, that's okay. 6 now, there's large variable lighting conditions, which is out to the right here, which gives rise to a problem. And there is pixel, uh, sorry, blob size number 7, which was uh, contaminated. Now, he suggests, and uh, I suppose we know, just go back here, sorry for jumping up and down, contaminated, contaminated, not contaminated, not contaminated. So just say 2177 or somewhere around there, uh, 4686, and that is not contaminated but it would look like it is so we would think that somewhere uh, and if we look at the contaminated ones there's 5197 and there's 11 so somewhere between 2177 and 5197 would be around there so if we take as suggested 4000 4100 4200 we're going to say that uh, image number six, the one I'm resting on here, is contaminated when in fact it isn't. But it's better to uh, reject uh, a dodgy one at the source rather than have people suing you. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks very much.